Alec Pierce, Tech Tips at Simco Diving in Barrie, Ontario. Yeah, great little dive shop. If you're up this way at all, diving in Lake Simcoe or Southern Ontario at all, drop in. Say hi to Chris. He's got a great, uh, great store here. Hydro test station, which is not that common anymore. Anyway, um, tank. <laughs> uh, I've actually heard the occasional diver tell me that they don't really believe that a tank cracks. They don't believe in SLC. SLC is, is a relatively new term that is used to describe the cracks that can occur in certain aluminum tanks. Sustained load cracks is what they are. And if you have a, if you have a tank, a Luxfer tank, or not necessarily Luxfer, other brands as well. This is not a Luxfer, this is a Kitty tank. K-I-D-D-E, K-I-D-D-E, pretty sure. And um, so it's not only Luxfer. But in that time, in that frame time from the late 70s to the mid 90s, uh, aluminum tanks were made from, they're, all, they're always made from different alloys, they're all different alloys. But there was a series of tanks, a lot of tanks, that were made from an a, a, a aluminum alloy called um, uh, 6351. I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. There's so many numbers in my head right now, but uh, it's easy to find. Just Google SLC Scuba or uh, something like that, and you'll find more details than I'm giving to you right here. I'm just touching uh, uh, some, some in interesting information for you. If you want more details, go to SLC or go to Luxfer luxfer.com and they have a whole section about the tanks and uh, unfortunately <clears throat> under sustained load hence sustained load cracks you see under sustained load the uh, tank would develop cracks in the neck this is a high stress area and under sustained load cracks can uh, can appear now by sustained load what is meant by that very simply is that the tank was under was full under high pressure. In this case, 3,000 psi. In this case, in most cases, 3,000 psi for a long period of time. So this would be the case where <clears throat> you filled your tank and then did not go diving. Let's say for six months or a year or maybe longer. It happens all the time. And so under those conditions, with that alloy, which is not was not suitable as it happens, and under a sustained load, cracks can appear in the tank. Unfortunately, this was discovered in, in a ra rather uh, uh, tragic way. Uh, some of these tanks actually exploded. Yes, uh, they had the cracks and they were filled, they exploded. Um, and there were people injured, not many, not many. We're not talking an epidemic here, but, but uh, some people were injured. So fairly quickly, the tank manufacturers and government agencies, safety agencies, jumped in quickly and uh, developed techniques to find these tanks, which tanks, and to inspect them and, and uh, determine if they were safe to use or not. Uh, some divers, as I've said, uh, uh, are skeptical about sustained load. So I thought I'd show you one. This tank today came into the dive store, into Chris's store here, Simcoe Diving, and uh, he, he couldn't believe it. The tank came in, it had air in it. It actually was under pressure. And then, of course, uh, in, in the process of doing the hydro and the uh, visual examination, Chris took the air out, removed the valve, and ta -da, did all, all the stuff that you have to do, which includes looking down inside the tank very carefully, using the proper tools, a small mirror to check around the neck, which is really important, a little dental mirror. And then most importantly is uh, inspecting the threads with this particular tool, which is the correct tool, by the way, put up by a company that makes special optical tool, tools for inspecting scuba tanks. It actually is a flashlight. When you turn this on, you can see that there's a light in there. And that light illuminates the threads very, very clearly. You can see the individual threads as you go around like so, looking down. Oh, wow, magnified. You didn't inspect every thread from the bottom to the very top. Well, in this particular case, it did not take Chris very long to spot the cracks because this particular tank has two cracks that are long, in fact, almost the full length of the thread, right from the top right down to the shoulder. It also has a couple of smaller cracks in it. So if there is anyone out there who perhaps is still skeptical about whether or not tanks develop cracks over a period of time, let me tell you, Kevin's got some pictures. Uh, of the cracks in this neck, and he's got a short video, a very short video, uh, uh, of, uh, as I move this little mirror up and down, you can see how long the crack is.
So fortunately, uh, Chris is very professional. He knows his job. <clears throat> he knows his job. Fortunately, this uh, tank was inspected and found to have those, uh, those cracks in it. And of course, has been condemned. Cannot be used anymore. Might make a good scuba bell. Huh? Oh, no, it's aluminum. Steel tanks make better bell. Anyway, might be a good use for it. But not as a scuba tank, not anymore. So there you go, guys. Some, uh, some pictures, a reminder about sustained load cracking and about these tanks, which essentially uh, cannot be used anymore, should not be used anymore, and, uh, and uh, that they actually do exist in some pictures. Maybe there's something in there that you've enjoyed. It might be of some interest to you. That's it. Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips at uh, Semco Diving. Talk to you soon. Thank you.